Happy Tuesday, guys. I hope you're having a great day so far. My apologies for the later post, but I have really been thinking a lot about what to talk about in this Tuesday talk. So I am just going to jump right in. I am a homeschool mama. I started this group um, because um, I had heard from others, you know, I, I as homeschooling, I wanted to incorporate art into our homeschool program. Now, I did a lot of art when I was younger, and that was all I ever wanted to do was be an artist, okay? Then kind of real life kind of came in, took over, I got the real job, and um, got married, had kids, and did all that awesome stuff, and the doing art kind of got put on the back burner, okay? Long story short had some homeschooling kids and, um, and, uh, you know, knew we needed to do art because I looked at, you know, what did I do in school? Well, you know, we did math, we did reading, you know, English, language arts, whatever. Um, we did science and history and we did art, right? So started out doing, you know, cute little crafty things, fun things with my kids. And as they got older, I actually had my oldest look at me and say, you know, he was never really a big coloring kid. He was never a big, you know, artsy craftsy or, you know, yeah, not a big artsy craftsy kids. But he said, if we're going to do art, I really want to do real art. So that forced me to up my game, right? And so I started asking around with other homeschooling moms, you know, what do you do for art? Because my kids want to do real art. And they said, well, we don't really do art we don't really do art <laughs> and I kept hearing that more and more and more and so that made me really start digging in and realizing I was gonna have to do it myself I was gonna have to figure this out okay and um, that kind of got me back into art so there's my not my story in a nutshell all right um, and how did I get back into art well it's the same way that I'm getting my kids into it. And here are four tips that I would recommend for you. If you know, you are trying to get your teens and tweens or yourself back into art. Pablo Picasso once said something along the lines of every child is an artist. The problem is trying to remain an artist as we grow up. And I think that in some ways, no truer words about art has ever been spoken. Because you can put a whole bunch of coloring material, materials or put kids, little kids, into a room with scissors and construction paper and glue and felt and, you know, any other medium you can possibly think of. And I guarantee you, they can come out of it and, you know, create masterpieces. And they're so proud of it. And they want to put it up on the on the um, uh, uh, refrigerator or the wall or whatever. And that is so awesome. I don't know what age it happens or why it happens or what happens in our brains, but suddenly we start looking at our work, thinking to ourselves, man, that's just, it's not good enough. It's just not good enough. I, that's not, I, psh, look at Sally's over there. Hers is so much better than mine or, you know, Bob's a much better artist and I'm not a good artist. And I think in school it doesn't help because, you know, then we put grades or teachers put grades on our artwork and I don't know where they come up with those grades. Okay. Um, that was always a tough one for, for me when I was in school. Like why did so-and-so get an A and this one got a C, you know, on art. Um, but so where did I start? Okay. Or what would I recommend for you? Well, first of all, start simple. Okay. Some of these I started with, um, doing, um, tutorials from different online things. Then it came to, you know, me finding pictures and creating, you know, very simple paintings from that. Okay. I'm, I, so that you have something to look at since I'm not putting my face on here. Um, today I'm just going to flip through some of my uh, some of my art journals and kind of show you my journey this one was kind of an idea that I had cute little snowman looking up at a little cardinal up in the tree um, and some pretty kind of impressionistic roses I mean this is really where I started so for me it starts simple don't start with the Sistine Chapel don't start with the Mona Lisa okay um, I think you know 
those things look easy and when, when we watch other artists especially if we're looking on youtube or whatever man they can make masterpieces and they make it look so simple and so easy but they've got how many years of experience behind them um so for them it might be simple and easy but everybody starts out an amateur every star buddy starts out with the simplest beginnings okay an athlete had to learn how to get up and walk before they could go out and run okay and that's the same with art all right don't be afraid of starting small don't be afraid of starting simple don't be afraid of where you start we are all on a journey it doesn't matter where or when you start the most important thing that you can do is start okay so that would be one start simple okay break it down into basic shapes basic colors don't get too crazy just start okay and the next one is to start small all right so I wanted to get back into watercolors all right and you've seen me a few of my watercolor paintings and stuff I actually got myself this little journal because my thinking was well I could you know do little watercolors and kind of build up um, to it so this uh, was where I started now I have not kept up with you know doing many in fact there's only three paintings in here so I really need to get more done but the point is I can start small okay and by starting simple and starting small you can build up your confidence all right a 16 by 20 canvas doesn't sound that big until you are standing in front of it with your palette in one hand your paintbrush in the other trying to make something amazing and it's so big don't be afraid of starting with something like an 8 by 10 or maybe a, an 11 by 14 there's you know cute little 12 by 12 canvases out there but start small and build your way up to bigger canvases okay um, and that's also a good great idea just for time wise because obviously if you're doing this and incorporating it as part of your homeschool day or your homeschool week you have other subjects to get to those big canvases can take a long time to fill up okay so unless you have a lot of time to devote to it start small don't be afraid of starting small don't be afraid of making bad art okay so every piece that I have done on this um, you know page channel whichever is not you know masterpieces again some a lot of these that I'm, I'm starting out with here some of those were actually tutorials that I found online okay this I was so proud of this owl when I did it you know I don't know maybe looking at it now it's not not one of the best because I've done some other owls and things like that since then okay don't be afraid of making bad art everything that I did in here is not you know the best a lot of it is just sketching ideas and things that I'm you know watching TV or my kids are at their ball game or something like that and I pull out my sketchbook and you know I play around and that's okay sometimes I'm just figuring out the paints or I'm helping somebody else with their projects or you know here's well something I did when I my kids were doing their martial arts class and you know here's a little t you know a little little thing for me a tip or you know advice or whatever when I'm making art I'm just assuming it's not winding up in a museum one day <laughs> I make art because I enjoy it and I sell my art because other people enjoy it and that's just the bottom line okay um, I'm not doing it so that I can get rich and famous I'm doing it because it's like something that's inside of me that has to get out um, here's one of my other owls this one is not mine okay this is um, uh, from a uh, another artist illustrator or whatever I found these owls and they just looked so cute and my husband had given me these ink pens for Christmas and I had to try them out and they got tried out on this cute little owl okay I'm trying to think if there's anything here's some flowers that I did let's go to this one okay the other thing I would say is you know don't be afraid to um, um, of making bad art but also don't be afraid of studying another artist okay so if there's another artist out there or like this I thought saw these owls and I thought they were absolutely adorable these are not mine 
I'm being perfectly honest with you. I'm not selling them. I just did them for myself, okay? So if you do a study, you have to make sure that you clearly tell people this is a study of, you know, somebody else's artwork or whatever. And um, here's another one. And, you know, then you can go ahead and, 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 and do it. Um, you know, that's how a lot of the, the masters learned by studying other art and other artists and their artwork. Um, don't be afraid of making bad art. Um, there's no, nothing bad is going to happen. We already talked about this cool stuff called gesso. If you make a bad painting, you know, if you make a bad drawing or painting in this sketchbook, you just get to flip the page and you start again. If you, um, you know, make bad art on a canvas and you don't want to keep it, you can gesso over it, okay? Um, that's okay. Um, this owl is mine. I drew this owl. After I drew some of the other ones, this one is mine. There's a little tweaky differences besides the color compared to the others. This one is my owl, all right? So you'll find your style, you'll find your groove, you'll find, you know, you through your art. Because here's the reality. When you draw, you put a little piece of yourself into your paintings. And you are awesome. And the world needs a whole lot more of you. Especially, you know, especially nowadays. If you're a good person, we need a whole lot more of you. All right? And so don't be afraid to just start. That's the biggest thing, okay? Again, my art isn't gonna wind up in a museum. You know, maybe one of you is destined to be, or more of you, are destined to be, you know, famous artists. That's probably not where I'm going, and that's not why I do this. I do it because I love art. Again, there's, it's like there's something inside of me that needs to get out on these pages and on the canvases and things like that. And I sell my art because other people like it. And it, they tell me it puts smiles on their faces. And there's nothing, not much in the world anyway, that gives me more joy than hearing, hearing that. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to start. Don't be afraid to, you know, start small, start humble, start, just, just, just start. Um, art is relaxing. It's therapeutic. It is fun. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it difficult. Um, don't put, you know, too much pressure on yourself or your kids. Um, just start. Start small. Start simple. And have fun. That's the biggest, most important thing that I can say to you when arting with teens and tweens and adults. If there's anything else I can do to help you, please let me know. Um, I hope that this some, in some way helps you and, um, and hopefully your teens and tweens, all right? Um, just because you do an art class or some art projects doesn't mean that you have to become a professional artist. Again, it can just be that you are playing around, having fun and relaxing and trying something different, getting those different, those, those unique those uniquely you creative juices flowing. I hope you guys have a great day and I can't wait till our next project, guys.